All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, the outline for rhetorical analysis. The goal for today uh, is to make sure that you feel good about everything going into the outline, that you have a good understanding of not only like what the goal of an outline is, but the, the process you're going to need to go through, how your setup could look, um, and then we're really going to quickly apply it to the box man before later in the lesson um, you'll get a chance to apply it uh, to something different. So the goal of uh, a rhetorical analysis outline is simply to prepare you to write the rhetorical analysis essay. So we're going to talk about all the information you're going to need in the outline before you can really start writing. Um, but uh, just want to make sure we're clear on what the goal is. And it's just, you know, take from this whatever you need. Um, if you are the type of person who uh, loves the outline and needs to put everything down, do that. Uh, if you're the person who wants to abbreviate it, uh, we're going to talk through some of those options as well. So don't forget, um, the most important thing to understand about the rhetorical analysis essay is the speaker's audience and purpose. Who are they talking to and how are they trying to uh, you know, impact them? That hasn't changed. Uh, we talked about that last week um, being important. Uh, and if you need a refresher, please feel free to watch the first video um, that we posted last week. All of the stuff is still on Google Classroom. You can find a famous speech of your own. You could look up uh, one of your favorite movies and actually break down looking for you know speaker, audience, subject, purpose, um, and audience. Um, you don't need anyone um, to uh, provide you a resource there. You could just turn on the TV um, and find a movie you like uh, and wait for the speech. Um, so uh, look um, all over um, if you want a little bit extra practice, but all of those resources are still there online. Also, don't forget, um, the second most important thing, not just uh, the audience and purpose, um, but how the rhetorical devices accomplish that purpose uh, is also of paramount importance. So it's not enough to just say, oh, I see a metaphor, that's great. How does that metaphor connect to the audience and purpose? So both of those things should work together. Um, if you want, once again, a refresher on rhetorical devices, uh, rewatch um, the video from last week. We review the most common ones. As I was looking back over it, I think that uh, the only thing that I'd want to add to those is probably anecdote. Sometimes people use short stories to get things across, um, but the short story uh, usually accomplishes um, you know, the purpose of sharing the main idea. Um, and so those are also something to keep in mind. Now, you can do the same thing with the speeches. Uh, if you find a famous speech, uh, if you hear somebody saying something on TV, uh, always a good idea to be like, hmm, what rhetorical devices do you think they're using? All right, so the process. Um, basically, you need to identify um, SASPA. Um, that, of course, is what you'll need for the first paragraph, but the speaker, the occasion, the subject, and the purpose in the audience. All of that you need to write paragraph one in order to get that thesis point. We will be going over the uh, rubric a little bit later, um, probably beginning of next week, um, but just wanna make sure you know, first of all, identify sauce. But a lot of this can be done before you even jump into the reading. So don't forget to read the blurb, uh, but that is the first step. After that, you need to be able to divide it into three sections, a beginning, a middle, and end. Uh, this is something where there is no right answer, you can do this on your own. What do you think is the beginning section and what's the main idea there? What do you think is the middle section? What do you think is the end? And so you should be able to identify really what you think the purpose of the beginning, middle, end is um, and what rhetorical devices you're noticing there. So this is the paper that you have seen uh, all year long. It's got SASPA in the upper right hand corner um, and it's got the body paragraph one, which is aligned to the beginning section of the rhetorical analysis. Uh, body paragraph two, which is aligned to the middle and body paragraph three, which is aligned to the end. Uh, you'll have to note here, the purpose of each of these should be slightly different. Uh, they're almost like stepping stones to get you to the ultimate purpose, which is usually the one at the end, um, but it's worth noting here as a quick reminder. Also, there's space for the rhetorical devices. So what rhetorical devices are you seeing in section one, two, and three? And also, most importantly, how can you connect those rhetorical devices back to purpose and audience? Now, let's say this is not uh, something that is your favorite, you don't wanna set it up. Um, you just need to make sure that you can get the most important information out of this, which as we talked about before is SASPA. It is knowing the rhetorical devices for the beginning and middle end and being able to connect them to the purpose and the audience. And so uh, if you can do those three things, it doesn't matter what your setup looks like, um, but uh, you can uh, do a good job of preparing for this essay with that information. 
I was just mentioning, um, your, your setup might look very different. Um, you could just put SOSPA rhetorical devices connection to purpose. Uh, you could do anything you want. The beauty of this test is that you can set up a ton of resources ahead of time. You should have your outline fully completed and ready to just fill in before the test actually starts. Uh, you can do that um, and you should be doing that, making sure you're not wasting any time during the test. Uh, actually creating something that you could have done beforehand. And so make sure whatever way you choose to go uh, that you have that information before you get started. Okay, so this is another resource um, or way to set up uh, what you could look at for your outline, paraphrasing the message from the prompt, identifying the purpose. Really, that's just talking about once again, like what are they asking? What is the uh, audience and uh, how does the audience want to impact the speaker? So that's really all the same stuff. But what I think is really interesting here is at the middle and towards the right of the page um, where they actually have a setup um, where they are already listing the rhetorical devices that they're most likely to think um, they're going to see and putting a check next to it and then putting the line next to it because you know the the test is going to be on a phone screen or on a computer screen uh, it could be really great and really helpful to have something like this written out already beforehand so that you can just go through and say oh yeah in line 12 there is uh, a use of juxtaposition in line uh, 15 there's repetition um, and so you can make this paper as big or as little as you would want to make sure you can fit everything in but something like this might also be helpful um, as you're preparing and thinking about what you would want um, going into the test. Now, if you wanted to take a step further beyond even outlines, you could actually almost like create sentence starters. And this is a good example of like what your sentence starters could look like for number one here, the intro paragraph, or number two, the first body paragraph. So in speaker's speech or letter or whatever it is, to audience, whoever they are, about subject, whatever it is, in year, whatever it is, they employed these rhetorical devices in order to do this thing to impact the audience. And so literally, you can just like, almost like a math problem here, like plug in uh, what the answers are, and you have your opening paragraph. You can really dig into like, what do I want my opening paragraph to look like? And you can create these like sentence stars, or you could use these ones right now. If you wanna pause and just literally write these down, uh, you could use these. Um, to uh, really help prepare yourself before the test even happens. We'll get a couple practice rounds with the tests, but I want you to make sure you have whatever resources you need, something like this, um, going forward. Here's what it would look like uh, filled in. I completely made this up. I don't know if Theodore Roosevelt wrote a letter to Congress about the national park system. I know it was like a, uh, a priority for him. I also know Woodrow Wilson um, was the one who signed it in a law, so take it for what it is. It's completely made up, but it's just to prove the point that in Theodore Roosevelt's letter to Congress about needing to establish a national park system in 1908, he employed repetition, imagery, and religious diction in order to implore Congress to consider putting aside money for a national park. So all of those things um, would be um, what I had in, parent in parentheses earlier. All you have to do is fill them in for each one. And I could do that with anything. Um, this was something I just made up, but each one of these things could fill in like this. Paragraph two would work that way as well. Uh, Roosevelt started off the letter by using repetition in order to underscore the need for um, need to preserve uh, natural land. In line three, et cetera, et cetera, it goes on to talk about the evidence, cite it specifically. Remember, always shorter, the shorter the better. And then, uh, of course, explaining how that evidence uh, actually impacts the audience. But this is this is a good setup. Um, and so if you wanted to just literally take these sentence starters and start to use them and employ them on your own, this test this year, you can. You can have this written down ahead of time and just plug in what you need if that's um, a preparation um, step that would help you. Now, just to really quickly go through this outline with like the box man example. Remember for SOSPA, you need speaker, occasion, uh, subject, purpose, and audience. If you're playing along at home, uh, you can pause the video right now um, and see if you can come up with each one of those are, uh, what each one of those um, actually is. But uh, if you haven't clicked pause yet, um, we're gonna go on to the next slide uh, and talk about what they actually are. So for the box man, of course, the speaker would be Barbara Asher. Occasion would be growing loneliness uh, in, in New York. Uh, the subject would be kind of this idea of what does it mean to be alone versus to be lonely. The purpose, of course, is to get New Yorkers to embrace being alone and not, you know, kind of like shy away from, uh, you know, that time, but really find solace in their own voice. Um, and the audience, of course, is New Yorkers who may be at risk of this, uh, the people who may be lonely and drowning in it. So 
for uh, the next part of the outline. You need to have the purpose for the beginning, middle, and the end. Uh, so once again, if you're playing at home, uh, you'd wanna pause the video right now, see if, what you would come up with for the beginning, middle, and end of the box, man. What was the purpose for each section? So beginning, uh, the purpose is really to get the audience to see the box man in a new light, um, something that maybe they wouldn't have assumed right away, um, but now they're seeing the respect and the admiration that she has for the box man. The middle is really to establish these kind of pitfalls of loneliness and how people uh, are very um, sad and they, they want um, to be with other people, but because life has put them in these circumstances, they're not as much. And of course, the end is to really get New Yorkers to embrace being alone. Uh, we are all alone no matter what she says. Uh, she goes through that whole thing about in the beginning of life, we look to our parents and then, then we look to a best friend and then we look to romantic interests, et cetera, et cetera. But life is a solo voyage. Um, and so she really wants people to embrace being alone. Now, finally, the actual rhetorical devices, uh, diction, imagery, and illusion, all very present through the beginning. Uh, the middle has uh, syntax uh, and anecdotes. Uh, and of course, the end is big with the metaphor about the solo voyage and the allusion to all of the doomed heroines um, of literature uh, that are listed out. All right, so if you have any questions about that um, or applying uh, that knowledge in the next step of the lesson, you're actually gonna need a little practice uh, applying this step um, to something of your choosing. Uh, so please reach out with any questions, 440-670-6979 or by email. Uh, my office hours are Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 to 2 p.m., but I'm available pretty much uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on most weekdays. Um, so if you have any questions, please reach out. There might be a slight delay. The internet has been uh, going in and out for us over here. Um, and so we've got somebody who's supposed to stop by and help look at it, um, but that may be the only reason uh, in terms of delay in response. Um, but otherwise, hope you have a good day, and I will uh, talk to you all again soon.